So when I first went there, I didn't realize that there's no such thing as a right of way. As long as you're in front, you win. So when I turned out, then I saw the bus coming. Wow, is it going to knock at me? Actually, you won't. You will you stop. Won't, yeah, you will yeah, stop. Because you are, you are in, front in front first. Uh. You in front, you win. Yep, so yeah, they yeah. have to stop. So I didn't know. But, wow, la, coming straight. Why yeah. this fella somewhere is a, is a tuk-tuk right? So small, the bus coming. How mm. can you still go out? Well, actually, they know because they will stop. Speaking of um, moving there and like experiencing culture, so now that you've received the information, your prep work is done, you are there. First two weeks, right? Mm. For us, the closest Singaporean experience is your intercom and then you gonna confinement. <laughs> but for you, it feels like a new adventure. How did that feel like? What what were your like joys and worries? I think things happened very fast from the time that uh, my boss made me drunk and to say yes. <laughs> And then suddenly I'm there. <laughs> okay. And then you say, you don't, you don't say, yeah, you look behind you, there are people who want to say, I, then I look behind, there's nobody. <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. Anyway, mm. I think, um, yeah, so things, it happened very fast. So mm. we just went down. I think the, the good thing for me, at least because we already had an office there. Mm. Right. We right, had people right. there. So, you know, the, the staff and, and the colleagues there were very nice and helpful to help me to find a house and all that. Mm. So it all happened within like a week or two weeks. So I like, I just get a flight. I go there. Then we said, decided to do for houses for me to rent mm. and stay. Mm. Look at a few houses and all that. After that, confirm ready. Then... I'm there, mm. right? Like the following week or two weeks later, I'm there. Then I still had to go and look for furniture or that. I still remember mm. my first one two nights when I stay in the in the room in the in the apartment. Haven't bought the curtains yet. <laughs> then the sunlight in my face, like I don't know what time. Wow, wow. <laughs> then opposite, you know, his neighbor, I can see. Wow, my city, I still <laughs> haven't haven't have curtain yet. Mm. So, kind of things happen really fast. Uh. Then really we just could get into the whole thing and they started to work there, you know. Oh. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, next month you go that time. So for my case, because it was, you know, that time in 2014, uh. right now, of course, things will be much better, more organized in the right, way that right, we do. Right. Uh. right. So I'm sure that when people go to an, a new country, they'll be planning out more things like that. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, but during my time, I was like, just go and yeah, just go and then, you know, just go and find a place and stay and start. Oh, so you only found the place when you moved over to India? Or like, do you settle everything in Singapore first? Then? The house, of course, I had to confirm. Mm. And confirm the place so that I was a place to stay. Um, I think the house was the, was the main thing. La, you know, uh, I, mm. I didn't have like a... Because firstly, it was nine months. Right. right? Oh, yeah. So I didn't feel that I'm going to be there for a long <laughs> term. Right? Uh, that's, you know, uh, uh, that's how, I uh, only nine months. Uh. Uh, <laughs> so even the house that I stay in, right, I mm. didn't like thinking that I'm going to stay here for long. So it became just like come and sleep. Uh, you know, I just, I'm here for two weeks, you know, yeah. so it's better than I stay in a hotel. Right. Yeah. And I, we got a place where it's next, like in the same, uh, same condominium area as the local MD. So at least ah, there's somebody who okay, can help okay. me out. Yeah, correct. Mm. And then his helper can come and help me to clean the house uh, and things uh, like that. Uh. So it was convenient like uh, like that. Like, and we just two or three weeks and then I go, then I go back already. Uh. Mm. back. So so the place I didn't even plan to do out nicely, but it was just like basic stuff. <laughs> very temporary. basic stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's not like do I do night <laughs> nice house, comfortable, whatever. That mm. only happened once I know that I'm going to be there permanently. Oh. Then I start to buy nice furniture, <laughs> get plants, you know, do all the house nicely to be me comfortable, nice big TV, all that. I think you it's know, very uh, interesting to yeah. be like your neighbor, just be like, this guy's been like slumming it for like the nine months. No, of course, I don't have to come, hey, come and see how I slum it. No, of course, yeah. no. Right? And, and also, one more thing is that because where I stay, right, it's not really in downtown, it's right. like mm. in the suburbs. Ah. Mm. Right? So, that period of time when I went, right, I usually I'm the only non-Indian there. Ah. You know, everywhere I go, the area are only the locals there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, good in a way that you experience a different side. Because if I stay in downtown, it will be expat staying, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. right. But of course, I didn't plan to actually stay for long. I thought, uh. why I want to spend that expense when you know, rent a place that's so expensive? Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, I just stay, you know, in the, in the suburbs. Mm. Right, so when I was there, then, you know... Uh, the area wasn't so developed yet. Now, of mm. course, it's more developed. There are nice roads and all that. But last time, there wasn't proper roads and all that. So, when the rain comes, the monsoon comes, wow, like you have one like, puddle. Then, when you cannot get kept with the tutu, right? To take mm. tutu, then things splash on you. <laughs> wow, you host it. Hell, yeah, you know, hell. Hell. yeah. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was good experience. I would say good memories. Then you're mm. like, wow, okay. I actually went through all of that. 
Mm. So when you you were like saying that okay you are the only non Indian in in the, the area that I say area, like when right. I go there okay so what 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 do I do on the weekend when I'm correct I'm there. about to ask like yeah. you, how, how do you find a community there to like just sustain your social because humans are social creatures if you don't do anything right I mean you can only look at mountains look at sea for so long lah but I mean the, no where I stay there's no mountain there's no that's sea. even <laughs> worse so yeah so what what were you doing during your free time so so I think there is uh, the the best place and the nearest place for me was a uh, mall. Okay. Right, it's in Orbit Mall. So ah. anybody who went to India at that point in time, we actually stayed in a hotel near this mall. So right, right. that mall has been around for a long time. The mall has cinemas, you know, has food court, restaurants, everything mm. Mm. So I spent a lot of time in that mall. But then I also start to uh, share with you like more more of the experience there. Like, I start to think, okay, I want to experience downtown. So what is downtown like? And downtown is quite, is quite far. So downtown there are two downtown. Mm. South, South Mumbai, mm-hmm. that's, that's all the way. That is like really downtown, downtown. And then there's a so-called newer downtown, right, called uh, Bandra area. Right. Mm. right. So that is, people will say South Mumbai will be the old rich. Mm. And then your Bandra area, your Wally or that will be your newer rich. Uh, uh, right, uh. will stay there. So that's also where the aspects area. Mm. So there was once I actually, you know, I would say I want to go and, you know, go and watch watch movie there, go downtown <laughs> and go to a nice big mall there. And then when on the way back, because that time I was still new, la, the traffic was very bad. Mm. Mm. So I wanted to come back from a movie and I said, hey, I want to watch a football game like an EPL game. Mm. Mm. So I said, it normally takes about an, an hour. Right. Mm. So I go talk. I just get into tuk tuk and then I just sit, right? I was stuck for three hours. Wow. And I stuck for three hours, right? Because the... The auto rickshaw on Tutu was quite low. Uh-huh. And then you have your big trucks. Uh-huh. And the sm- smoke and the thing uh-huh. just keep blowing into my face. Like, uh-huh. I think, wow, I am shook. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> new experience. So, so after that, yes. then I then I realised, like, okay, when I want to go to a place like that, I will have to plan. I can, I can I should only go back home after a certain time. Uh-huh. You know, then the traffic will not be so bad. And I will also check, okay, how is the traffic right now? Right, then, yeah. right. So that right. also become like you ask me though. So weekends, there are, there are some weekends where it's like I just don't want to go up because of the bad traffic. Uh. Oh, it takes two hours for me to get there and then come back. Oh, I just, you know, I just stay at home, like, you know. Uh. Mm. Yeah, of course, I got my PlayStation, just play game, <laughs> watch movie, <laughs> okay, okay. go to the mall there on my own, you know, uh. watch movie on my own, eat on my own. Right. So that was at the beginning. Right. And then mm. after that, I of course start to meet local friends. Uh. I uh. actually, you know, Still, I enjoy that like I just uh. to meet lo- meet local friends and 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 hang out with them oh. right because I think a lot of the aspects and also the Singaporean friends that I also got to meet who work for the government and stuff they usually stay in Bandra mm. in downtown like, like they were, when they ask me where I stay I say I stay at Malak West they all look at me they say <laughs> nobody stay beyond the airport uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I say it's not so bad right uh. but. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see many aspects there because uh. I see when I, when I, I was there, usually I see I'm the only non-Indian uh. there, mm. right? So so then, you know, when I start to plan the trip, I'm always like, oh, okay, okay, how long does it take? Well, if it's raining, how? So, it, you know, it's not like, oh, let's go town orchard or go somewhere. Then you say, oh, this is boring. Let's go to another place. Uh, you no, know, it's not so easy. Right. right. So if I go to this place, I need to know what are the options there. This place boring. Where can I hop to? How far uh, is uh. it? How is it to get the transport? Or not? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. if, if rain, how, where, where to get? Right. Uh, and usually also, because I don't speak... Uh, Hindi, right? Yeah. So a lot of time the driver and the and the auto rickshaw they don't actually speak English or so. Mm. Right. So sometimes they will call, they cannot find me, right? They will call where are you like in Hindi la mm. yeah, to talk to a stranger. Can you help me to talk to him? <laughs> and they are very friendly, la. they uh, understand yeah, I'm a foreigner. Yeah, they will yes. just take the phone, explain, explain oh, where to come to find this Correct. call and all that. La. Right. So yeah, that's also part of the experience. Mm. Interesting, yeah. interesting. But how do you meet like um like these local friends or like your, is it like mostly from work or like do you have other No, actually okay, first uh was uh football. So I oh, play football. uh futsal with mm. uh, you know I get to find out where to play and I start to meet friends with these people who are playing right? mm. you, I think in general people there are very nice and friendly mm. and then they know that you're a foreigner they are very open yep. you know mm. they want to also yeah, they're also curious about you where mm. you're from what you do and in general I think uh, we have we do have a good brand name with Indians in yep. general like they kind of like us and trust us in general uh-huh. right so when we always tell them oh I'm, I'm from Singapore here to work or they'll be even interested because like not many people will go and work in India right correct, yeah. stay correct, in this, this area so they'll be interested hey hello what you yeah. do and things like that so play football with them that's one mm. and then from there 
Then I also started to go gym, right? Uh. In the condo gym, also started to know more people who go gyming, who are my uh. neighbors, lah. You know, uh. and and then what? One of the more interesting one is that I stayed in that place for a long time, and then right across is my neighbor, lah. And then he has a son who, uh. you know, actually he's in his twenties. His name is Dashen, lah. He wish he were going to watch this video and, and <laughs> talk to him, right? So for a long time, you like you only talk about football because he's mm. also you know a football fan, right? Right, and then one fine day, we bump to each other in the club. Right, we like the kind of music uh. a- as well. Uh. Then, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> after that, we start to hang out, and then we go and party together, and you mm. know, for the same kind of music that we like, all that. So uh. then from there on, I got to know more people because mm. of one guy. Then I got to know more who are into the same interest, uh, uh, common interest. Mm. Right, then as time goes by, you start to make more friends, lah. Yeah. So you're very extroverted by nature, la. Like you're not f- fearful of putting yourself in these kind of social situations. I mean, it's not saying that it's dangerous there, but it's just a, a strange, new, unexplored area, law, right? Yeah, but I mean, firstly, firstly, I'm I'm expat there, and they are. I mean, the Indians there that I have met are all very friendly, right. warm, mm. and 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 also I think when you go to restaurants not the fancy ones like you go to a simple restaurant that the service is always I feel it's very good it's mm. very homely no? homely uh, and they are friendly uh, they are friendly uh. and then you know I mean here of course people always complain about the service levels here <laughs> yep, yep. like you owe them a living right yeah. like, <laughs> and you go there this guy give me a black face they come on brother I'm here uh, to uh, enjoy uh. myself right mm. but there it's like they really give you a good service like, yep, yep. you know and of course and, and, and one more thing when I first went over is the they always have to call me sir, la, yeah. which I'm oh. not used to that. Yep, yep, yep. Right? So, so, so when I told even the staff, I said, don't call me sir, just call me by my name. So uh. they're not used to that. Yep, yep, mm. yeah, but for them, it's a way to be respectful. Correct, mm. correct. Right? And it's hierarchical in that way that, oh, you know, they are respectful of their elders, yep. you know, of a mentor. They mm. always call me like Eric sir. Yep. Then, mm. then even the like, clients, the partners also, because they see that I'm, you know, at this level, it's, oh, you, know, you always call me sir. Yep. I said, don't call me sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm not used to this. Uh. You know, I just call me by my by my name. It's uh. fine or that. Mm. So after a while, they also okay. La, you know? uh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's, that's how we roll and it's okay yep. la, yeah wow, that, that's interesting because I also feel like honorifics and everything mm. I guess m- most countries like uh, do like emphasize a lot on that because when I when I was in Indo, right, then um, I would call everybody like Tia Tia Koko, then yeah. like, Sir and all that. Yeah. Then when mm. I came here, then I call my seniors, like my first friend, like, oh, Tia Tia, then just like, don't call <laughs> yeah, me that. Like, yeah. that's so cringe. Yeah, this is like the cultural differences, like, you know, like, mm. correct, what correct. you explain, no, is, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, us being uh, uh, basically a democratic America- uh, meritocracy is like that law. Yeah. You're, you're just judged based on not when you are born, uh, but what mm. you can do. Uh. But here, the, the brilliant thing I think about the culture difference is that we are the only ones that are like this. Yeah. Right? In all Asian countries, if you think about it, right? respectful to the elders, uh, mm. it, like the Confucianism of mm. it, right, mm. is very prevalent. Mm. We are the only mm. one who's like efficiency. <laughs> if yeah. you don't give me your work rate, your throughput, no, no, no <laughs> call to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think it's quite interesting that. Um, we put ourselves in such situations to remind ourselves that, hey, you know, it's not be all end all, right? Because mm. a lot of people who think about relocation, especially for work, is the mm. work part, mm. right? And like all the finances and everything like that. But we don't really think about the fact that, hey, this is a time for us to like realign to see whether or not the Singaporean culture mm. that we adopted may or may not have been too toxic for us, you know, mm. and, and it change us for the better. But I think you won't realize until you move to a new place. Yeah. Then Correct. you also need Correct. to be self aware. Mm. Some people. You know, some people like to go to a new country but do the same things. Mm. Mm. You know, hang out with your own people, eat the same food. Eh, there's no point like, to me. Yeah. Like, why don't you just stay in your country? You don't need to leave the country, you know? Correct, but I mean, like you also, when you see a fellow Singaporeans, you can la le then you also show up. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, but I, don't, I don't want to hang out with them all the time. Uh, correct, mm. like, you know, you know what I mean? But it's not that I don't like them. It's like, I see you also like that in Singapore. So why am I coming here to hang out with more Singaporeans, right? <laughs> yeah, I want to hang out with the local. I want mm. to, you know, explore new things and things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it also generally just like opens your eyes to like all the new like experiences, new people, then how they, um, how they like behave, how they like relate to other people is also mm. very different, right? Mm, yeah, mm, so mm, I think mm. it's... And I think at first when you go there, the first thing you uh, you uh, you realise is that there's a lot of honking. And then the traffic is very close to the issue. Yep. So you don't realize, hey, am I going to like knock to this guy? Mm. Correct. But somehow it will not happen. People mm. will just know how to, you know, Swerve. maneuver yes. and all that. So when my brother first went, he described the traffic as like water. 
Yep, yep. Right, there's no rules. You just to just like where you, where there are places to flow, the traffic will flow. Correct. Mm. Right. So in in chaos, there is order also. Yes. Mm. And people kind of know what to do in the kind of uh, traffic. You don't need rules to help you what to do, but they know what to do. Right. So accidents don't actually don't happen that often. I don't see that very often. Mm. Uh, mm. You know when I travel, just that maybe the speed wise is not very fast. Yeah. Try so everybody go on a certain speed then, Correct. but they will know how to do it. So when I first went there, I didn't realize that there's no such thing as the right way. Mm. Yep, yep. As long as you're in front, you win. Yep. Right? So when I turn out, then I saw the bus coming. Wow, is it going to knock at me? Actually, it won't. It will you stop. Won't, yeah, it will yeah, stop. Because you are, you are in, front in front first. Uh, you in front, you win. Yep, so yeah. they have to stop. <laughs> so I didn't know. But, wow, wow, coming straight. Why yeah. this fella somehow is a, is a tuk-tuk right? So small, the bus coming. Mm. How can you still go out? Well, actually, they know because they will stop. Yeah, mm. that, that was also that one was of the, your, your yeah, experience, right? When it's, I was young, I was amazed. The the the, the uh um what's it called? Our liaison there was like, oh, you don't like, cause young uh, mm. the first thing you learn in school is raise your hand at the traffic light. Oh. First thing I look for traffic light, no traffic light. Yeah. Like, how, how am I ever yeah. gonna cross the road then? Right, so I just walk. But the cars are coming. They won't hit you. What do you mean? <laughs> then we, we, uh, he just w- just watch him walk. Uh. He walk already. He can stand in the center and just wait on it. Huh. Just come, come, come. I'm like, mm, I'm like, I'm going to do <laughs> it. Don't just walk, walk. Then they will see. Then they, the kids behind them, let's mm. say they're sending on the, uh, uh, to school, right? They also just wait for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just very casual to them. Then just speeding. Sometimes no helmet. Also just go like hi. Then like hi. Then you just walk the road, right? And you really feel like wow, you're the center of the universe. Mm. But I think it's a cultural thing mm. because they are not. Uh, self-centered mm. they're very aware of their situation yeah. mm. so therefore right they know what's happening and they can just do and so Singapore I just know no I'm first yeah, right, yeah. I have right away green mm. light I win mm. <laughs> it's a very it's just small little subtle things yes, like. yes, yes, it's, it's true. just it's true it's very hard to describe to somebody who has never been there because it sounds like magic mm. right because it's not uh, logical to our society mm. that mm. or oh, you hear first you go first because we are very <laughs> rules based and very focused but on they're also very rules based ma, right if you are uh, first okay, you go first that's the rule I mean there's this <laughs> term in India that is commonly used is uh, jugat uh-huh. right so they, it's a way of like you know uh, a workaround so mm. whatever problem or changes you have, there's always a jugat way they call Correct. it. Like, oh. you know? ah, okay, yes. And that, that's a, also a very interesting culture of, of Indians. Because uh. mm. then that means they're actually quite resourceful, mm. quite creative, mm. right? They will think out of the box and mm. they will not be like, oh, because there's a problem there, you know, I, then there's no way I can do it. Mm. They'll find a way and mm. they call it the jugat way, mm. right? So so that is also an amazing trait, you know, of, uh, of a developing country where... Mm. Firstly, I think the government the, and the services are not great. You know, not like ours. Mm. But the people then become very uh, resourceful. Yep. Mm. They will find their own way. Mm. So they won't be so dependent. Oh, the government need to do this for me. They don't. Mm. They know that I'm not going to depend on you. Let me find <laughs> my way to do things. You uh-huh. know? Yeah. So, so that that's how the Juga thing came about. Because there's always a way for you to fix things. Right. So, like so there, there are some pictures you're saying that, oh how the villagers can de- can come up with a generator. Mm. So they find ways and parts and different things uh, to come up with something like a generator. Mm. Although it's not the actual thing, but it still works. Yep. Mm. So the important thing is they will, they will have a workaround, they have a way to make things work. Mm. Right? Uh, so that is a jugat way. Mm. Oh, so it's like the saying, if there is a will, there is a way, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And also, you need to be, have the intellect uh, to know how to find <laughs> right. a way. Yeah, yeah. find your resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. 